Welcome back to the meeting after the meeting, everyone. We're your hosts, David O. And Eric B. Today we're joined by our very special guest, James. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you, gentlemen? Doing well, man. Doing good, yeah. Doing good. Yeah. So, uh, where are you from, James? I am from Billings, Montana. Billings, Montana. And when were you first introduced to recovery? On uh, 4 2 of 18. Nice. So, how long have you been clean? I have been clean for, let's see, August 1st would have been 28 months. Nice. Congratulations. That's yeah, awesome. Man. All right. So James's uh, topic of choice tonight was uh, sponsorship. He was talking about sort of uh, the transition of, from when you lose a sponsor to finding a new one. But my wife actually gave me this mm-hmm. suggestion the other night. She was like, you know, you should kind of like define some of the lingo you're going with because for the newcomers, they might not know what we're talking about. So... Mm. I was like, okay, okay, that's good. I like that. So for anybody who out there listening who is a newcomer, fresh to recovery, a sponsor is somebody uh, in the like the 12-step fellowship uh, avenue of recovery that sort of guides you through the uh, step working process of that particular fellowship. So, and we're, we're kind of going to expound on this topic. We're, we're going to talk about like finding a sponsor like first off how like the whole process is building a relationship with them going through steps and the possible unfortunate event of uh, a sponsor ditching you or a sponsor relapsing and how you would deal with that in recovery so um all right so i'm going to turn it over to james to uh, share his experience with this and uh take it away buddy well all right um I guess my initial um, introduction to a sponsorship would have been, right, it was probably two or three months into my um, recovery. It was a guy at work um, that uh, just sort of reached out to me. He was, one of the other guys there was going through recovery too, and he he had mentioned him, and I just, you know, he gave me his number, so I texted him and said, hey, what's going on? He reached out to me, and we, you know, we talked, and he said, hey, go to a couple meetings, you know, come with me and check it out. We went and did that whole thing, mm-hmm. and um, I just thought, you know, let's try this sponsor thing. So I asked him, you know, hey, can you sponsor me? Mm-hmm. And without even questioning it or hesitation, he said, absolutely. Mm-hmm. So we went, we did the sponsorship thing. We worked through a couple of steps. Um, then it kind of died down for a little bit there because both of us being so super busy at work mm-hmm. and I know that's uh, not necessarily an excuse for anybody by any stretch of the imagination I've it seen happens. people that they live live by it die by it that is their thing doing mm-hmm. the steps and all that but you know life just you know with family and everything kind of gets it gets I guess not gets in the way but it gets put to the forefront of it mm-hmm. um so we just kind of, you know, back and forth with it and going to meetings here and there. And then, you know, like I said on the show before, I, I just kind of stopped going because I, I just didn't feel uh, comfortable or in my own skin in those places. And it, it's hard to explain it. It just, to me, it didn't feel right. It didn't, I didn't notice any, uh, like, life-changing improvements or overnight, um, I guess, improvements, again, that, necessitated me for to, for me to keep going to him mm-hmm. I mean he was cool with it you know no big deal you know no problem hey if you have any problems or issues you know you know call me text me hit me up whenever you know let me know and we'll we'll figure it out you know yeah. so it, it, it went on for a few more months and we're still buds and this and that and um there was an and this is gonna sound I don't I don't know really how to say it because I don't want it to sound like all sponsors are bad I mm-hmm. because I'm not. I'm not saying that by any means. So I don't want any newcomers to come into this and start thinking, holy crap, all sponsors are going to do that. Huh. They're not going to. My sponsor is a mechanic where it's the dealership where I work. Mm-hmm. I work in the body shop. My son and his girlfriend and just bought a brand new car. Mm-hmm. And there were some issues with it from the factory. So they, they took it in. They had to fix and address the issues. Well, I asked 
specifically for him to do it because I trust him. It had to do with a lot of airbag stuff and my granddaughter being in the car. That's the only person I trusted. Yeah. Well, come the time that they do it, he tears into it and just destroys everything. I mean, scratches it, gouges all the plastics, all kinds of stuff. And I walked over, you know, at one of the days that was in there just to kind of see how it was going. And he just fucking, he flipped his shit on me. You know, oh. I fucking hate you. Get out of here. I don't want to talk to you. I was like, I, okay. Um, all right, I get it. You're this, you're struggling with this. Cool. You know, no, what, no problem. Whatever. Mm-hmm. And he just destroyed it. Well, the next day after that, I was outside doing something with the customer's car. And he walked up. He's like, oh, you know, hey, man, I, I didn't mean to blow up stuff. And I just flat looked at him and said, I get it. You know, whatever, dude. It is what it is. Yeah. And I left it at that. I mean, because I, you know, I don't, I don't think, I sh- actually, I don't feel that I did anything wrong. You know, I was just checking on to see how things were going. Mm-hmm. And I get it, people blow up, you know, and that's one of the things of recovery is forgiveness. Just let things go. You you don't know the other person's situation. Yeah. And I'm fine with that. And I just flat out told him, he's the truth. You know, it does what it is. You know, no, no big deal. Well, from that day forward, he was gone for probably a month from work. I don't know if. And I should have reached out to him to ask him. I should have. But I didn't. Mm-hmm. I don't know what. I guess that's just alcoholic or recovered brain. I don't know what happened. It just, I don't know if he fell off the wagon or if he got hit with the COVID shit and had to be gone for a while or if he was in training. I never asked anything. Um, so I just said, you know what, that's it. Um, I guess this, this is probably where we should part ways. Mm-hmm. You know, as far as that goes, because I don't know what he's going through. He's probably got enough stuff in his life that he doesn't need to be bothered with my stuff. Yeah. Um, and and no words have been said since he hasn't come up to me and said anything. And it's it just sounds really completely fifth grade ish. And I get it. I do. Not all sponsors are like that. Not everybody reacts like that. Mm-hmm. But I was I was kind of upset about it. Like. You know, why, you know, whatever, I guess you're having something going on. And that's cool. That's fine. I understand. But Mm -hmm. to me right now at this point, and this has been probably, this has happened months or so ago. I'm okay with it. Um, I haven't made, to be honest, a conscious effort to go out and try and search out a new sponsor because being in the rooms around here, uh, I've seen people that have had six, seven years be in there one day, and then the next time they're in there, they're relapsing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I don't know about, I mean, I there are ways of finding one. I just, at this point right now, I don't, I haven't made the effort to go out and find one, because I, I look at it like this, and I don't want anybody to take, by, take anything I say to heart and buy the book, and that's religion, and that's how it goes, because mm-hmm. it's not. Yeah. I like I said, but you know, on the show on the show before, things work way differently for me. Um, I haven't, you know, I don't think I need to go out and find one. To be honest, I have my family, I have my granddaughters, mm-hmm. I have my friends. My granddaughters mean the world to me. They keep me in line. You know, I, I don't think that I, I, you know, if I'm having a bad day or just having a a, a moment, you know, I I can come home. And I see him, and it it makes everything go away. Now, don't get me wrong; there still has there still is times that mm-hmm. that bottle sounds really, really good at any given moment. Oh yeah. But I, my mind just goes somewhere else away from it. You know, like uh, what can I do when I get home to play with the grandkids, or you know, what can we do, or I'll sit down and talk with my girlfriend. And my my kids, my youngest daughter is she's like. Um, I guess you could say that of all my kids, she is probably the hardest pressed on this because I can't even make a joke mm-hmm. about sobriety and she <laughs> loses her ever loving fucking mind, gets so <laughs> ungodly pissed off at me. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, I mean, they, they all do. They are all concerned and they all care. But for some reason, she just latches onto it. Mm-hmm. And it's she, I guess she kind of, in a way without realizing it, number knows to her is she is kind of my sponsor because if I can't even walk into a store, if we get anywhere near a beer or alcohol aisle, she grabs me, we have to go the other direction. <laughs> so I, I mean, sponsorship, 
it helps people. I know this for a fact. Yeah. It's proven. It's mm-hmm. documented. I've seen people that it has helped. I've seen people become sponsors and help them mm-hmm. to no end. But and I don't know what happened with, with this one. I'm okay with it. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it is what it is. It, it happens. And I'm, I'm really at this point, I'm okay not having a sponsor because also the, you know, the thought of every day, you know, what, what am I going to get asked about the, ne- the next step or what am I going to get asked about this and that, you know, mm-hmm. I don't need that. I want to be able to walk from shop to shop to shop and not have the, you know, get fear of getting pulled to the side. Hey, we need to do, you know, that's just not me, yeah. you know, and I, I don't know. I mean, that's my thought on that. Um, what, what are your guys' thoughts? Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. Uh, my, like my thought personally is, uh, whatever works for the individual, honestly, um, mm-hmm. because there's, there's many fellowships of recovery. They're not all 12 step based. Um, and they don't have a sponsorship type uh, relationship or structure um, and it works for people. Some people um, even with the 12 steps work it personally by themselves and it works. So it, it really depends on like the, the individual like and mm-hmm. m- my process uh, it's, it's drastically helped for me. Um, it was a very big deal in early recovery for me. It took me um, probably probably a good month to ask my first sponsor um, to sponsor me. And he was kind of weird in the way he went about it. Like I wasn't allowed to start actually working steps until I called him every day for 30 days. And that like, it It sounds like a nightmare to me. It was, it it was. And like three weeks in it, like it was going fine for three weeks. And, but like, I was also in culinary school at the time and, uh, I, I missed a day. And then, uh, like I I was just busy that day and I didn't get to call him and so I called him the next day and he was like oh we gotta start over I was like seriously what? yeah he was like oh we can't can't start so so I had like almost I was I was past 90 days clean at this time and I, I like I was anxious to like do some step work and he was like no we gotta start over and so I was like ugh whatever so I started looking for another sponsor <laughs> I know, yeah. So, so like I, 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 I developed a resentment. So part of that was on me, like, but it, like part of it was on him as well. But uh, the good thing is, like, it, it became water under the bridge, and I'm still friends with him today. So ultimately, it, it wasn't that big a deal. It, it, like, it set me back a little bit, but not really. So I, I ended up making oh. my first sponsorship change. Uh, right around three, four months clean to the, to my, fr- my, my good friend Tyler. And I worked my first two steps with him. Um, and then right before, and I worked with him for a good six months and I, I learned so much. I got to go through like my reservations with him. Like, uh, basically it, it Anybody who's listening, like a reservation is something that you have in the back of your mind, which is sort of like a deal, a deal breaker of recovery. Like if this situation happened, you would have to go back to drinks or drugs. And um, uh, one of my reservations like that I went through with him, I was like, you know, like hallucinogens. I was like, I don't really like think of them and i was like maybe if i have like 15 or 20 years clean i could do them again and he's like all right all right let's go into that let's 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 explore that let's say you have 10 years clean 15 years clean and you have five or ten sponsees and they trust you and everything and then all of a sudden they hear that their sponsor has just dropped acid because he felt like it at 15 years clean how would that affect Mm -hmm. somebody else's life and i was like wow i i didn't think of it at all and he was like exactly because that's the that's the selfish mentality 
that addicts have. Like, I wasn't thinking about anybody that I could be potentially be hurting. I was just thinking about, oh, what something hypothetically that I might want 15, 20 years from now. And he was like, that's crazy. Why would you even think about that? That shit's crazy. So he 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 was the one who really drove the nail into my head that like it has to be really like for right now and also um you got to be willing to do anything to stay clean. But like yeah, no kidding. Yeah, but then yeah, uh, things happened and I ended up making a, a sponsorship switch right before my first year clean and he's been my sponsor ever since. Uh for the last seven years and he's wow yeah he has 12 years clean his sponsor has 22 years clean his sponsor has 34 years clean so i got into this sponsorship yeah i got into this sponsorship family where these guys just i i look up to all three of them immensely and they all bring so much different stuff to the table and it, it, it's been mm-hmm. it's been great uh, being able to learn from them, and because they're also very liberal with like the twelve steps, so like they are also very supportive when I talk about needing more than just the twelve steps. Like I like I love NA and what it's what it's given me, but in my opinion, it was. Uh, really a, a, a springboard to so much more that's out there yeah, to, yeah. To, to supplement exactly. my re- to my recovery. Um, so yeah, like I, I've had to make a couple switches, but in eight year, in almost eight years clean, I had three sponsors my first year, and I've had the same guy ever since. So I I see tremendous amounts of value in really developing that personal relationship because it's held me accountable through the years um, because he he doesn't give me answers that are just like pats on the back or co-signing my bullshit. He knows me so well now that when like something's going on, he's like, you know, that's that's really you and i'm like what and i'm like that's not the other person's problem that's your fucking problem and you need to deal with it and i'm like god damn it can't you can't you just tell me what i want to hear for once and just he's like well no fuck you (laughs) he's like recover i I kind of think i kind of i kind of think that you know a lot of people that are on the journey to recovery and looking for a sponsor um, I, I unfortunately I, I think that the majority of them might possibly that's what they're out looking for when they get a sponsor is they want somebody that's going to tell them what they want to hear which yeah. ultimately will lead to their demo- their downfall you absolutely know? You, I don't know if I guess what it what it would would come down to is having a sponsor that like you were saying with yours will call you out on your bullshit and mm-hmm. give it to you front and center right in front of your face saying like you said no that's not their problem this is your problem yep you fucking deal with it yep you created this monster you have to deal with this monster and and like and i see it so many times just on various you know i'll say platforms Mm -hmm. uh, media platforms and you know 90 percent of those media platforms of people that are on there as much as I hate to say it, but looking at the stuff that they say and or do or post on on these platforms is you can see right through the bullshit. All that they yeah. really want and are fishing for is attention in yep. any aspects or any regards of what they're saying. That's what, you know, those are the ones that are going to fall heavily because they're either going to find that sponsor that they can connect with and will accept them calling them out on their bullshit or they're just going to go through sponsor after sponsor after sponsor after sponsor Mm -hmm. and never find that one that is going to tell them what they want to hear or they will find that one that tells them that and they're they're just going to fall miserably and then they're going to blame everybody for Mm -hmm. again that's your problem you deal with it you got yourself into it yeah dig your way out of it i can just i can only give you ideas and or hints about this is what I would do to dig myself out of that. I'm not going to sit here and say, Oh God, you know, it's going to be, I would be 
I would probably be one of those sponsors that is like I just described and will call you out on every goddamn amount of bullshit that there is. Yeah. And I'm sorry. Cussing is allowed, correct? Absolutely. Of course. Yeah, fucking right. I get I I get so passionate that I just I start getting wound up that yeah, I would call fuck you fuck up, I'm gonna call you out on it. I'm yeah. gonna hold you accountable for it. Don't come calling me at one o'clock in the morning because you're at a bar drunk because you had a, uh, uh, I don't know, another spat with your, you know, your loved one that mm-hmm. you had the same spat for the past year, at least five or six times a month. Exactly. But here's your option: get the fuck out of that relationship. Yeah. Move on with your life. And and once me- you do that, then I can help you. Yeah. And like my like using that like a, that situation as an example, like I have like two points. If I was their sponsor, I'd be like, number one, don't call me drunk. You can call me before. Like if you have the bottle in your hand and it's about to go to your lips, you can call me then. But as soon as you're fucking drunk, mm-hmm. I'm hanging up on your ass. I don't have time for that shit. Yep. Like. Yep. Yeah. Don't call me. Yeah. Don't waste my time. Don't do any of that shit. If yeah. you're gonna fucking make that conscious decision. To pick that goddamn bottle up and put it in your mouth, why the fuck are you calling me? Your mind has already been made. I can't change your mind. Absolutely. If and you th- call me before, mm-hmm. and that's then something I can help I've, you. I've learned through my through my uh, uh, sponsorship family is like you have to be prepared to accept the consequences because ultimately, like my mm-hmm. my sponsor is not going to keep me clean. My great my 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 grand sponsor, my great grand sponsor, sure, those guys collectively have sixty years of recovery. They're not going to keep me clean. They can't stop me from doing what uh, mm-hmm. I'm doing. But they no, they not unless they're there. Exactly, but they've always warned me, be like, you can do whatever you want, but you have to be prepared for the consequences. And like the second part Mm -hmm. of that is, if it's like, oh, my girlfriend got into a fight, like how frivolous is your fucking recovery situation if a fight with your girlfriend or husband or whatever is is enough to drive you back to drugs and alcohol? Like really, that's how strong your fucking program is? Like you better you better start working on some shit and find some shit that's gonna keep you clean through an argument because there's a lot bigger shit coming exactly. down the pipe. Exactly. You know, and they, when they say something like that, it's almost like, okay, so in a roundabout way, okay, it sucks you had a fight with your girlfriend. Yeah. All right, whatever. It yeah. happens. But you wanna you wanna drink because of that. So in a roundabout way, what you're telling me is you've really been planning on drinking. You were just looking for some sort of an excuse. Here's what you do. Why don't you tell me what that argument was about? Was it because you wanted to drink? Because you're fucking retarded, if that's <laughs> the case. Put two and two together. It, it mm-hmm. makes perfect sense. It really, really does. Recovery, believe it or not, uh, and I want to It's an individual thing. opinionated about this. Yeah, it is not that difficult. It really is not. If you just, you have to set your mind on that path and have the right people around you, sponsors or not, Mm -hmm. and just stay in that mindset, you will be, you'll be good, you know? But I can see a, um, God forbid, uh, a death in the family. That might tip you over the edge. I can see that. Mm -hmm. That's it's, that's fine. But, however, it's the same aspect. You pick that bottle up and it goes in your mouth, don't call me. Yeah. If you're thinking about it, absolutely call me and I will be right there at your side no matter when you need it because I, death in the family is uh, far more tragic than having a little spat with your girlfriend over God knows what. You know? I actually want to tell you a story. So, um... Uh, right before my one year, I was talking with my current sponsor, Herb, and he's telling me, like, he's like, we're having a conversation about, like, what lengths we're willing to go and, like, what we can get through clean. And he's like, okay, let's say you're married and uh, somebody just randomly kidnaps your wife, chops her up into bits and throws her into a dumpster. What are you going to do? And I was like, what the fuck? I was like, when is that scenario ever going to happen? And he was like, he was like, it's a crazy fucking world. He was like, you don't know when shit's Mm going to happen. He was like, do you think your wife would want you to go out and just drown yourself in a bottle or get really fucking high? She, and he was like, no. He was like, that's not what your loved one would want for you. You can't just crumble in that moment, regardless of how shitty it is. 
And that that nope. that what that has stuck with me with, with for seven years because not three months later. So that was in October when we had that conversation. January of the next year, that second sponsor I had, Tyler, he was murdered. Like he was clean, he was work he was working in the in the Columbia Mall in Maryland, which is like suburban USA, and he was just randomly murdered with no motive at all. Some guy just killed him. And he was a really good friend who was integral in my early recovery. And I now had to sit through this really fucking traumatic event of like losing somebody, not to old age or anything or cancer, but they were murdered. And it, it just went straight back mm-hmm. to that that lesson that my current sponsor Herb taught me. He was like, "What are you gonna do?" And what I did was called called my my network, called the people in my uh, fellowship, and I leaned on them hard. And honestly, I cried for like three months straight. It was terrible. It was awful. It was it was one of the worst things I've ever gone through. But now I have that in my toolbox as, "Hey, I got through. Mm-hmm. I got through." Of one of my good friends at age 25 getting murdered and I got through it clean. I dealt, I, I dealt with those feelings. I sat through them. I cried forever. I talked it out. I like, I did whatever I had to do and I, 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 I stayed through it. So I'm like, man, if I can get through that, there's there. It, I, yes, I'm sure there are some worse scenarios, but not probably not too goddamn many. And uh, that that's something I can be mm-hmm. proud to uh, have have uh, stuck it out through. But what about you, Eric? I can see oh, you're exactly. chomping at the bit. Um, Tell us your sponsorship experience. So I've actually had I've had the same sponsor for eight years, right? Eight years, yeah, 2012. So I've actually only had one sponsor. I have never switched sponsors. I have, um, I've only had one and we've worked the steps twice. And I guess. But your sponsor did move. My sponsor did move. So he lives in Virginia. I live in Maryland. Um, so, I mean, we meet, we don't actually meet up right now, but like we talk over the phone um every uh we talk over the phone every about month and a half so like we'll use uh i think uh zoom right now and huh my ring went off and no one's there um Ghosts, but, dude. Yeah, ghosts. I mean, I hear, I yeah, hear the, Luna. The, the dog's going crazy over so, ghosts over here. Um, but the, uh, yeah, so my sponsor and I, I mean, he moved away, what, five years ago? Mm-hmm. And we've been communicating through Skype and Zoom, and I've had relapses during that time. Um, but, you know, it's, it works for me. Now, how does that go? Like, communicating your relapses to your sponsor well you know me yeah i do but uh like i i don't i don't really know this but i I mean i'm pretty straightforward i'm like hey i relapsed Mm -hmm. and so like you can expound on that how does tim take that um Clearly, he's still your sponsor, so he takes it fairly decently. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's like, the, I don't know. There's no reason in... I would never fire a sponsee, right? Like, and I, I'm, I've i had sponsees, you know, and I mean, one of them struggled mightily. Mm-hmm. And the other one, I mean, he was fine. But it's like... Just because you fuck up doesn't mean that you like you you say fuck off because yeah. that's not the point of being in recovery. Absolutely, and the point's to help people. So you know, my sponsorship family has always believed in. It's not really about the. So, like, so my sponsor you know, will work steps with someone even if they're not fully clean. And 
That's controversial. It's very controversial, but I support it. I but support a lot of, it. A lot of people don't. I because I, I personally, I think it's fucking ridiculous when people say like, "Oh well, you know, the literature isn't going to get in you if you're high." And it's like, "Fuck you!" I got a college degree when I was high. I can read this <laughs> fucking book. Like, you know, that is at, what, a fifth grade reading level? I can read this and comprehend it and get, like, something out of it. So the concept that, you know, just because you're fucked up doesn't mean you're going to understand the concepts and principles and begin to turn your life around, that's fucking stupid. Yep. So with, like, the sponsorship family I'm from... You know, it is this kind of concept that it's like, we're going to start helping you even if you're not fully willing to jump all the way in. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so, I mean, I don't know, when I've relapsed, I'm just kind of like, I relapsed. Yeah. You know, like, we'll just move forward. There's no reason to dwell on it. So. Yeah. Absolutely. That's one of the biggest things I think people fear, too. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut in. I is, no, no, you're uh, good. Expanding on his point, expanding on his point of, you know, uh, the fear of relapse. And you, like you said, you just move on. You start fresh, you start clean, and you, you move forward. A lot of people just, I guess, dwelling on it um, can ultimately be one of the, 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 the biggest undoing of it all is, you know, with, with dwelling on it. Um, yeah, dwell on it for a little bit. You, you fucked up. You face your consequences, mm-hmm. you move forward. But for years and years or whatever it takes, just keep dwelling on it. You're just, you're destroying yourself. You're destroying people around you because that is all your folks. Now you're, you're driving yourself and your loved ones insane with it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, and, and I think that people have to understand, and it sounds uh, backwards, but if you relapse, it's okay because I guess it's, you know, it's bound to happen to some people, mm-hmm. whether or not it can be, you know, argued till people are blue in the face, whether it is okay or whether it's not okay. It's, it's just that it happened. And like he said, you, you brush, you pick yourself up, brush yourself off, move forward. And really, I guess if, if something it's not really dwell on, but realize what caused that relapse and avoid I guess avoid that situation, you know, if it ever comes up again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I've always loved the way Eric approaches <laughs> it, um, that relapse is not a part of recovery, but it can absolutely be part of your story. And that's something that like he, mm-hmm. he impressed upon me is that he needed those relapses to really get those lessons. Um, Oh, yeah. in, in his own mind. In his- I did need to relapse, mm-hmm. for sure. I mean, I, we haven't gone into my story, and eventually we will, but, um, yeah, I mean, fuck, like, I, and this will be controversial, too. I guess a lot of what some of the things I do is, like, I yes, say is controversial. Yes, you're a contrarian. Um, I was too invested with the fellowship. Mm-hmm. And... Some people are like, oh, what do you mean? Like, you know, like you go to, you know, go to a meeting every day and you, you read oh, the book no. and oh, no. and all this. And, and I don't know. So at a certain point and, you know, you'll hear like recovery comes first and, and that's all well and good. And I'm not, I'm not saying that's not right, but we get clean and sober to regain our life. Mm -hmm. And if our life just Mm -hmm. becomes recovery and our family is losing out because of that, that's fucked up. Mm -hmm. So my first like real go in recovery, I was too invested. And Mm -hmm. I mean, I spent way too much time in the rooms. You made recovery unmanageable. Yeah. And like people say like, oh, you can't do that. It's like, yes, you can. can. I've met other people who've done it too. Mm -hmm. And some people are willing to admit it and some people aren't. But like, if you're not getting what you need to do done in life and you're focused on like chairing a meeting or being, you know, the head of a subcommittee, um, being a GSR, like, and you're always worried about this other shit that, I mean, to be quite honest, doesn't fucking matter. Um, 
Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know. Like, I think what matters is spending time with, like, my grandmother. That means more than going to a fucking area service meeting. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know, yeah, some people are going to be like, fuck me. And that's fine. I, like, I went to area service. I went and did all this stuff. And I, I don't regret doing it. But I do think, like, there's a balance that we need to to have. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, absolutely. Like recovery should always be in the mix, but sometimes, uh, going to your niece's dance recital is more important than a fucking meeting. I don't care if it's your home group, like it's your niece's once in a lifetime dance recital and you now have the ability to show up show up number one and number mm-hmm. number two even be invited like it took it took uh what five to six years for my one sister to allow me to see my nieces and nephews that's like one of the greatest like pains of my like uh like that that was one of the worst losses in my addiction was was my nieces i lost out years of their lives that i can never get back and have like uh last year or two years ago my one niece was uh performing the lion king musical and i got to my sister invited me to it and it was on the night of my home group and i just told my home group sorry this is this is once in a lifetime i'll see you next week like Mm -hmm. and people and people need to realize that i'm not telling anybody to miss meetings for this or that. But like, you have to understand that like, if you're missing out on your sons and your daughters and your mothers and your grandmothers and your nieces and your nephews, if you're, if you're missing out on life because of recovery, then all you've done is you've substituted drugs and alcohol for, for meetings and you're obsessing about something new. Mm -hmm. Should it be a tool? It's a tool to help you gain your life back, to gain all those things. Should it always be in the mix? Yes. Should you try to make meetings when you can and when it's fiscally responsible? Yeah. You shouldn't be blowing off work to go to a meeting because, oh, uh, recovery comes first. No, sometimes your fucking bills come first, buddy. Especially if you have kids. Yeah. Like, you got to go to work. You got you to gotta pay the bills. Like... Your kids need health insurance. Like, there's lots of shit that sometimes comes before a meeting, and that's okay. But, like, a lot of people want to... Like, Eric's recovery is not ev- is not everyone's recovery. My recovery is not e- everyone's recovery. James' recovery is not everyone's recovery. Like, find what works for you. And and if it and if it takes a sponsor to do that, by all means, get a sponsor. If if you don't want a sponsor, then don't have a fucking sponsor. It's up to you. But yep. there's lots of people. That's it. Yeah, that's it. It's it's up to you what you're willing to do and what works for you in your recovery. So I want to bring something up here about <coughs> another controversial type of uh, topic. Love it. Um, oh boy. So I don't think you necessarily need a sponsor to go through the steps. Mm. Huh. Okay, so so mm. just hear me out. Maybe the first time, sure, I'll give you the first time. But I've gone through the steps twice. Mm-hmm. Do I need a sponsor to take me through them again? Um. Hmm. Me personally, I, I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna politely disagree. That's okay. Just just because. Um. Yeah, I think it's a, it, it it's that accountability piece that I was ta- talking about. Like, I I don't know what's come up in your life in this new round of step work, but if you just read it to yourself, you can believe your own bullshit. But if if you're and maybe not necessarily a sponsor, but it, it, as long as you're sharing it with somebody, um, I I, I think mm-hmm. there I think there needs to be a third party there. So you're saying you're not capable I, of being gonna, honest with yourself. With that. That's what you're saying. By by saying that no. you need someone to hold you accountable, you're not capable in your own of honesty to yourself. We, dude, we're humans. We are humans, dude. But like you that, should. That, I mean, you should be able to like recognize 
and like have self honesty. Like it, like it's like yeah. But we can have, you can have a, a, a relapse in self honesty. You can have a relapse in in just normal honesty. Like you can tell somebody a lie. It happens. Yeah, I'm at I'm at a different place right now. I, I mean, I, I don't I'm know. At a different I'm place a different right different now. Place Get the right fuck now. out of here. Yeah. I I think I'm gonna I'm gonna be the uh, um, the, what do they call it the moderator here. Mm-hmm. Please I'm do. Agree. I'm gonna agree with both of you on this. Yeah. On both sides of that story. Yeah. However, in a, in a roundabout way, I think that I have to pull a rebuttal on that because I haven't um, done enough steps mm-hmm. to uh, base a you know an honest opinion on that because yeah. both of your guys' opinions are are spot on. Absolutely. They're perfect. Yeah. Ex, you know, but honestly for, you know, for me to believe either or, I think that I would need to uh, be farther along in the in my step process, but just hearing both sides of your guys' um, thoughts on it, they're, they're, they're very, both very, very valid opinions. Mm-hmm. And there could be that could be a whole other um, topic of discussion on that because oh, yeah. they're very, they make sense. Yeah. If a person stops and really thinks about it, like I ha- like I just did just quick uh, um, working the numbers out in my head, I guess for lack of a better term, mm-hmm. is they, they both, both of these opinions are very valid. They're yeah. very true, very worthy. So I, I mean, hmm. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I can't really base, you know, a given opinion or thought on it, other than the fact that I agree with both of you. But at the same time, I have to back up because I really don't have a lot of ground to stand on. Yeah, on that, and, and, and like that's okay. And 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 like back to Eric, like it's not necessarily about self deception. Um, sometimes it's just uh, getting that different point of view because like we don't think alike at all like we can look at the same painting and come up with two different interpretations at all mm-hmm. like in entirely so just having uh the the i like i just value the the second person in the room to be like well hey did you think about this and it's like oh shit i didn't i mean to be honest though like oh, this is like i'm just kind of like these are just hot takes all over the place Dude, right now. Dude, we're very different people. Um, we have very different recoveries. And that's what I love takes. about this. At this point in my life, I've worked the steps twice. Okay, well here... I don't need to really work them again. Let me throw, you, let me throw something at you. So you just did the Smart Recovery Workbook. Different different, different thing, man. Exactly, totally exactly. Oh, yep, 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 yep. But so, do you think you would benefit from somebody who has previously worked it themselves to at least just like no. have a discussion? You would no benefit. That like no benefit, none. But that's not what the journey I'm on right now. If if the journey I'm on right now is to get insight, sure, like I'll talk to someone about what I've done. Yeah. But I don't want to go through it with someone. No, you don't necessarily have to go through it with them, like, step by step. But at least, to ha- like, somebody has more experience in smart recovery than you do. They Like, mm-hmm. period. So they have experience you don't have but i don't want to be a part of smart recovery i understand that but it, like i'm 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 using it as an, <laughs> a microcosm a, this is an example educational like self f- like fulfillment of like we need couples you know, counseling eric no but i'm saying like i went through that to understand smart recovery james and to also, we're dysfunctional hold on and to also work on <laughs> and to also work on like a vice i was having like that i wanted or behavior that i wanted to like work on i chose a behavior and i was like i want to work on this yeah like going through with another person at this point like i don't i don't care you like, know? to be real, like, I just don't care. But you're sharing with me. And that's, 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 David, that's basically, that's very you, similar to sponsorship. <laughs> you're not my sponsor. I'm if not that, saying I'm your sponsor. I'm not saying I'm your if, sponsor. If anything, we've been over this. It would be the other way around. I neither confirm nor deny that. <laughs> may or may not be. You know, it, 
kind of going back to the uh, what he had said with the, with two people in the room looking at a uh, let's say a, 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 a painting or mm-hmm. some sort of art. Yeah, I I have found that and this is why I enjoy this this show so much is because of the differing opinions. Yeah, I have found that if you get say okay say you're a fly on the wall and mm-hmm. you put two people in that room that are exactly like-minded and you're trying to dis- you're trying to get uh, various aspects of said painting mm-hmm. what are you getting out of that yeah you're getting one side yeah now like with you two guys if i put you two in a room say you're looking at the same picture i'm going to get two oh, yeah. sides of the story oh, yeah, that's gonna and great. i'm gonna see i'm gonna see say oh i didn't really notice that that uh hue of sunset like i thought it was mm-hmm. where david said it was blue eric said it's kind of a reddish you look at it and see the differing opinions on whether it's sponsorship uh anything else to do with recovery life in general or just something as simple as looking at a painting mm-hmm. the more point of views that you can see or that you get the better you'll see it absolutely whether, you know, like you said whether you know you do the steps by yourself or if you do them with somebody else yeah to me i think as long as you've got uh someone again that will keep you in check and call you on your bullshit no matter how ridiculous it really seems Mm -hmm. things are so much better yeah but when you have that also have that uh, uh varying opinion from somebody um let's say it's a circle like i'll use my family for example if I say something or think something and, and my girlfriend says, well, that's kind of ridiculous. I'll say, okay, I'll fair enough. I'll, you know, I'll take that. Mm-hmm. But if I wrote it by someone else, I say, well, if you look at it this way and then I bring it back and say, well, what about this way? And she says, well, see, now that makes more sense as to what, because normally if I think about something or I get excited about something, it's just, it's flat out utter, utter gibberish and yeah. nobody can understand the goddamn thing I'm saying. <laughs> well, when there's varying multiple varying opinions, you know, and, and opinions coming from people that um, uh, actually give a shit and are not just there to uh, uh, just to agree with you or to shut you up, mm-hmm. but will show you this is, you know, this color of the sky is blue, but it's also got a little bit of a reddish, mm-hmm. a red in it. See, it, it all, it really all makes sense as far as, you know, having a sponsor and or, you know, working the steps, whether if you think you can do it on your own or you need that other person. Yeah. There's, there's those barriers. There's, there's both those opinions. And I, I think, you know, again, I can't say much, but I think that a person like, you know, like I said, was, you, you find what works for you, but, but it never, it's like, you know, going to the doctor, are you going to take their advice? If it's something, you know, life threatening, like you have cancer, mm-hmm. I'm going to go over here to the next hospital and get a doctor just for a second, and just to put yourself at you know at ease, you don't ever want to jump, jump, and or take the first thing that is thrown right at you. And mm-hmm. that's why I feel um, people looking for sponsorship should do. It. And I think that I, I can speak from because I kind of jumped on it on my own. I wasn't familiar with the whole sponsorship thing. I just knew the word sponsor, and that mm-hmm. it's supposed to be a miracle thing. I jumped onto the first one that I found. Mm. Take some time, you know. Yeah. Look into things. Uh, judge judge people's characters. Uh, oh, you know, yes. find out about, see what they've been through. You kick their tires, I guess, for lack of, you know, yeah, for no other real way of saying it. Yeah, you know. And if that person, if that works for you, super sweet, man. You know, they'll work the steps and do everything else. Mm-hmm. It's just, it, I think what happens, and I found myself doing it a lot, was uh, people in recovery tend to overthink things way too much. Oh, yeah. When the answer is probably right there in front of your face, you just, what is it, you can't see the forest for the trees or whatever Mm -hmm. that thing is? Don't overthink it. Just just do it, you know? Because when you start overthinking it, your focus goes somewhere else. Absolutely. Well, so, so like... I could could use one of my... Most Eric hated quotes oh, go, ever. Go fuck yourself, dude. I hate that stupid shit. Um, but what I'm saying is that I'm not saying don't get a sponsor, right? No. Sponsorship 
is good, you know, and even in work, I, I think having people who are mentors um, or like a sponsor is a mentor, right? Mm-hmm. But don't don't look at the fucking big book or the basic text or whatever fucking book you're like looking at and look at it at this like as gospel. Yeah. And and not be willing yeah. to pick it up and fucking read it because you don't have a sponsor. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think that's one of the things that always it always frustrates me is when I see people who are like, well, my sponsor told me not to read the, you know, the next chapter. And it's like, then what are you fucking doing? Yeah. <laughs> like, what, what yeah. are you doing? Exactly. Are you going to a meeting mm-hmm. and you're at what? You're at, who's an addict? You're in that chapter. Mm-hmm. Or, so you're in the meeting, you're an addict and you can only read like this small chapter and you can't go past it until your sponsor says you can. Mm-hmm. Um, and some people are afraid to go past a certain part in the book, right? Yeah. And mm-hmm. like, I'm just mm-hmm. saying, like, don't be afraid to like learn. Yeah. And you know, like, keep growing at your pace sometimes, because I don't always think, like, going back to like, and I know who your first sponsor was. Um. So. Yeah. It's kind of funny, but you know, his pace didn't work for you, right? No. So like. That's going to happen sometimes where it's like... that's okay. Yeah. A sponsorship is not a marriage. Like, you are not stuck with any one decision. Like, if it's not working, well, yeah. move on. But I'm saying, like, sometimes, like, pace, like, go at... Like, sometimes the sponsor's pace isn't at your pace and you should do it. Mm-hmm. So. Um, yeah, like, uh, and... And one of the big things, I think, is don't put sponsors or predecessors on a pedestal. Oh, yeah. Like, Fuck they that. they are they yeah. are fallible humans just like you are. And, like, just like you said, like, he snapped at you. Like, hey, sometimes that can happen. And and you know what? Sometimes sponsors can give shitty advice. And, <laughs> and like, that happens, too. That's why it's so important, like you said, to have as many... Uh, as many this is a terrible analogy as many cooks in the kitchen as possible because like you can uh make sure you're bouncing things off of your network like if something from your sponsor doesn't quite sound right go talk to another person in recovery and be like is this right and sometimes it sometimes it will be sometimes it won't be but like ultimately a sponsor is supposed to be a loving person in your in your life that is pushing you to be your absolute best and in in the process of getting to know each other there you're gonna work better and like i really think sponsorships kind of uh on from what i've seen and what i've experienced really aged like a a fine wine for pun intended (laughs) uh and and it's just gotten better and better um because like he 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 knows uh like he's pushed my buttons in the past and I've pushed his buttons in the past and now we know that like we're like we've a, a sponsorship doesn't have to be a friend but they can be and my sponsorship luckily for me and my recovery is one of my best friends and I can ab- I could tell him absolutely anything and he would not bat an eye. He would like there would be no judgment, and it would be like, okay, this is the issue. Cool. How are we gonna? How are we gonna uh, get to the solution? And then he would push mm-hmm. in, and he would push me towards that. Like it, it, it should be somebody that challenges you, and not somebody that placates you, and and just pats you on the head for all the all the great magical stuff you do. You are such a special recovering addict, snowflake. You're special. No, it's like, hey, you fucked up for a while. You're like, and like, that's that's an early recovery. Like, and and speaking of a relapse, like, sure, um, your your active addiction or your relapse, yeah, it, it you, you shouldn't have been doing what you were doing. Like, let's let's reflect on it briefly. Let's learn what we can learn, and then let's move past it and grow through it. Hmm. Exactly. But I think... You know, I found a couple of... Uh, this is it's sort of on topic, but I guess not really. Uh, little things that um, 
I have found come with the uh, summer months and not being able to really, you know, might not go to a concert or oh, you know, no. like you were saying, go to uh, your niece's recital with everything being, you know, where you can't fucking do anything anymore, mm-hmm. which is fine. I get it. I, I get their whole, I get their understanding behind it. I have found, and this is going to sound really strange, but <clears throat> I have found that if I'm having a moment and my grandkids aren't around or if they're, you know, out running around with their mom and their friends or doing whatever, I have access to all kinds of tools in my garage. Mm-hmm. So I go out there and I, and I build things. And that, that to me is like a, a, a hands-on sponsorship. I, I built a yeah. coffin out of wood and made a flower planter out of it. Nice. Put it on, posted it online. Hey, I made this. And I had people texting me, hey, can you make me one too? So I ended up making like four or five of these things. I built bunches of them. They're all over our yard. I planted trees. Mm-hmm. Uh, we bought some paint. And I was going to paint. I don't remember what it was, but I put some on the house. I thought, oh, it was kind of cool. Before I know it, we had the house painted. That is all like, that. that it's a, uh, it's a, uh, not a physical sponsor, but it's more of a, uh, in my mind, I sponsor type deal. Right. It keeps me mm-hmm. calm and elevated. And I, and I don't even think about things. I just get out there and I do it and I look at it and I'm like, fuck yeah. Because years ago, you know, this never would have happened. And I, and I come to realize that the first year or so of my recovery, um, still, you know, fresh into it with, you know, the fresh sponsor and everything. And just thinking of things on my own, it has taken me probably, I'd say a year and change to uh, come to terms with the fact that I can go out and I can do things without, you know, needing alcohol there with me. I I guess uh, taking on to basically rebuild myself Mm -hmm. to do those things and not have to say, you know, I need a beer. I better call my sponsor or Mm -hmm. anything like that. You know, I mean, there were, I probably texted him or called him maybe, well, when my granddaughter was in that wreck, probably then, and that was the only time that I ever bothered him with, hey, I'm having, you know, some trouble. So I, I guess in hindsight, losing him as a sponsor may have probably been a, a godsend without being all religious, religious mm-hmm. about it. Mm-hmm. And maybe at some point down the road, <clears throat> I can find another sponsor. But for me, at, right now at this moment in time, I don't feel that I need one. Yeah. But I'm not, again, not discouraging people from going out and getting one because, like we've said before, some things may help them that don't help me and what helps me may not help them. Mm-hmm. You know, Ultimately, I think that people need to find their way and, and go with what they feel works best for them. Don't just because everybody says you need a sponsor. That doesn't necessarily mean that you have to absolutely have one. That's just... I'm going to, I'm going to go political here to say these are the, these are the thoughts and opinions of me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, you're, you're, you see, and, yeah. you know, and, and working the steps, that's rad, man. If you can work them and you got somebody there to work them with, whether it be a sponsor or hell, or even a loved one, even though I know that's a controversial type thing too, mm-hmm. you know, do what you can. And, and like you said, don't be afraid to read ahead in that book because, yeah. You never know what you're going to, you're going to, you know, you don't know what you're getting into unless, like you said, you learn. You yeah. need to learn the steps and processes of staying away from the bottle, staying away from the needle or whatever your, you know, your poison is. Mm-hmm. Read ahead, figure it out, talk to people. You know, it, it does not hurt to yeah. talk to anyone about anything, you know? Yeah. And, and sponsor or not, I think it's important to just have a relationship with somebody in recovery and if it's in person that's great if it's through twitter that's awesome through facebook or or instagram or whatever there's lots of people out there going through recovery just like you and just just find Mm -hmm. somebody to talk to And and i'm glad you brought up the whole the whole tool chest because that's that's what recovery is recovery is getting as many tools in your chest as you can get and and just stop mm-hmm. just stopping with one tool thinking it's going to get the job done I, I think you're doing yourself a disservice so always oh, always push your recovery to that next thing and 
and there's there's self-help authors and there's poets and gurus and all sorts of people out there who are are are, mm-hmm. are just talking about human connection and positivity and there's so many different avenues that you can take recovery. Don't stop at just one. Explore them all. Because it's yeah. it's not going to exactly. hurt. You, you're you're going to pick up a book and you're like, well, that book wasn't for me. Pick up the next one. And you're like, wow, that really changed. That blew my mind. And then you pick up the next one. And it was like, oh, I blew my mind even further. So you just mm-hmm. don't just stop with one book from some fellowship. Find all the books. Go to the library. Google, hit Google. Say best best books for uh positive self image positive self realization um um whatever it might be like m- mindful mindful meditation explore them all just be a sponge it, it, absorb as much recovery mm-hmm. and positivity knowledge as you possibly can and you're going to be better off the more tools you have in the chest you're going to get the job done a lot more efficiently Big. Because when you when you stop learning anything, you need to move on because you're just going to become stale mm-hmm. and complacent. And that for recovery or just anybody that hasn't ever had a problem, it's going to be become a huge issue within a very short amount of time. Yeah. Like you said, keep your mind as spongy as possible and learn and just keep learning because whether you believe it or not, you're going to think that you're done learning. Trust me, there are more, way more things out there that you can dive right into, mm-hmm. and it just keeps, you know, keeps taking you farther and farther and farther down the road. Yeah. It's almost like getting on YouTube to see, um, say, how to change the light bulb, and 12 hours later, you're figuring out why giraffe's necks are so long. Yeah, you just you you can go all over the place, and you will find whatever you need. Yep. to. jump down. Never the close your mind down to yep. anything. Jump down the rabbit hole and, and and enjoy the journey of of recovery. Exactly. All right. Well, you got anything else to say, Eric? No, I think I think we're uh, about out of time, David. All right. Well, we would like to thank our guest James for joining us to, this evening. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Great job, James. Thank you, guys, for having me. I hope I didn't uh, kill anybody off with the first episode. So. No, 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 not yet. No, no. 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 Well, it would kind of be hard to hear that, but no, no, I, it was great. And, uh, you're always welcome to come back on and, uh, yeah, we're, we're, your reco- right. we're, we're part of your recovery network and, uh, you're part of ours and yeah, we love having you. I appreciate that. I will gladly come on anytime you guys want me. Absolutely, man. All right, everybody. Well, thank you for joining us this evening. Uh, Make sure you check us out on all of our platforms, our Twitter, our Facebook, our Instagram, our YouTube. For more information about Eric, Carly, Allie, and myself, go to podcastrecovery.com. And uh, Podcast Recovery, we we need some new mic stands. No, no, no. no. Let's let's go a little bit different here. We're going different? We need need support. We need support. We need love. Um, there is, uh, we are fully self-supporting here yeah. and, uh, we want to keep bringing you guys, you know, new and refreshing content on multiple platforms and, uh, we need your support. So mm-hmm. join the home group, um, our Patreon page, or, you know, put a few dollars in, you know, the digital basket for PayPal or Venmo. And you can find all that information in the description in this episode's links below. You do that a lot better. You're going to do that from now on. You're going to, you're, you're going to handle that. I'll, I'll, I'll do all the, 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 the lovey-dovey stuff. You, you'll, you'll do the official shit. You're the more official guy. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us again, James. You, you did a great job. Most importantly, everybody out there, stay safe and stay clean.